On a field next to the very large array is, a, is an antenna array of a very different kind. We're standing in the middle of one of the banks of the long wavelength array. And with me is Jake Hartman, an assistant scientist attached to this project. So Jake, explain, how do you do radio astronomy with elements like this? Each of these antennas will be taking just a little bit of the picture. And the signals from all of the antennas ultimately will get tied together to do a, different, do a couple different things. Uh, one is to be able to look at individual spots on the sky, uh, and we'll be able to look at uh, four different spots on the sky simultaneously, which is uh, something cool that you're able to do with this type of antenna, which is completely impossible with a dish like the VLA, because obviously the VLA has to point something. So, so Jake, explain. It, sure. These elements are fixed. They, don't, they never move. How do you move an array that never moves? That's right. Uh, so we point this array, we move this array uh, using software, and this is done just by uh, setting up the, the delays between the different antennas. So if we have a source coming from over there on the sky, the signal from that source is going to hit one of the antennas on that side of the array before it hits one of the antennas on that side of the array. And so we're able to take that delay into account to digitally point the array. And because it's done in computers, we're able to do this to point at multiple spots on the same time. So we're able to simultaneously study multiple objects. So the computer then knows for the direction that you're interested in that the signals have reached one antenna before another. That's right. And then it takes the signal from the near antennas and holds it up a little bit so that it's joined from the signals from the far antennas as if the whole array had been tilted in the direction you're interested in. Is that how it works? That's exactly right. What frequencies does this array work for? So the frequencies this works at uh, are below the FM radio band. That's from 10 to about 80 megahertz we'll be looking at. Uh, and that's interesting because that gives us a view of the sky that uh, really hasn't been looked at in strong detail since the earliest days of radio astronomy. Jake, give us an example of the kinds of science that a ray like this is designed to, to look for. There are a number of objects that we'll be interested, we'll be interested to look at uh, at the low frequencies. Uh, with this first station, some of the things we'll be looking at are pulsars. Uh, it, some evidence suggests that uh, some very interesting things happen to when you look at pulsars at low frequencies. We should be able to determine how these systems work in ways we haven't before. Uh, we also will be able to look at the entire sky just with this one station and that will be neat because we'll be able to monitor transients, things that are just going off in the night and in the day, uh, and we don't know what we'll see uh, at these frequencies. We have some guesses of objects that will be flashing on and off, but there's always the question of serendipity, finding things that we don't expect whenever you're looking in a new part, uh, whenever you're looking at the sky in a new way. What about um, uh, gas clouds, old synchrotron remnants, uh, clusters of galaxies? Are these the kinds of, you know, uh, the kinds of steep spectrum, old, uh, that's getting interesting. <laughs> the kinds of steep spectrum, old radiation, are these kinds of things that are in the science plan for the LWA? Uh, those are in later stages of the science plan. I mentioned uh, pulsars and mm -hmm. uh, all sky specifically because that's something that can be done with fewer stations. Mm -hmm. As we increase the number of stations, we will dramatically be increasing the power of the, uh, the array. And ultimately, mm -hmm. yes, the, we would be looking at that okay. kind of thing as but well. But for that, you need many more stations. For that, you need many Just more like stations. Just we have many antennas, you need many stations. That's right. Is it correct to say that each of these is an antenna? And this whole arrangement here is a station? Yes. Okay, so that's just a, a part of the nomenclature in this the, business. Absolutely. The, as far as nomenclature, this is an uh, antenna. There are 256 yeah. antennas in the station, and hopefully when it's complete, there will be 50 stations in the full array. Okay, and only one more question. What about ionospheric research? Since this is low frequency, highly affected by the ionosphere, is that part of the justification, the plan of the science for this? Absolutely. The Navy, the Air Force, and these are institutions that are very interested in atmospheric science uh, and ionospheric science. So there we're talking about looking at the 10 to 30 megahertz area of the spectrum. Now, when you're looking at such low frequencies, the 
ionized particles in the upper atmosphere will actually reflect radio waves. So at that point, you're no longer necessarily looking at stars or planets or things outside of the uh, Earth's effect. You're actually looking at the upper layers of the atmosphere itself. And these types of studies are very important in understanding uh, satellite communications, refining GPS systems, this sort of thing. Right. Well, I think that the weather is closing in on us and it is time to uh, seek some shelter.